I'm Peter Block here at the American Heart Association annual meeting in Chicago. I'm here for On the Scene and with me is my colleague at Emory, Arshad Kiyumi. Arshad has been extremely involved with the stem cell business from early on and now we have a new anterior my acute myocardial infarction, I should say, trial with stem cells, intracoronary injection. Arshad, tell me about this trial. So this was a study that was performed using autologous CD34 positive cells that were obtained from the patient's bone marrow, were injected intracoronary, a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled study. And it's an intracoronary injection. That's an important point, isn't it? This is not an intravenous, but it's directly intracoronary. Acute infarct patients, how long after their infarct did they get the uh, IC injection? Uh, they got the injection about nine days on average after receiving a stent post-MI. They had to have left ventricular dysfunction after day four to qualify. And in other words, had to have a major large anterior, oh, sorry, not anterior, but an acute ST segment elevation myocardial infarction. The mean ejection fraction in this group was 34% in both groups. Wow, so you really did choose patients who had been hit badly by their infarct. Exactly. Okay, so intracoronary ejection about a week and a half after their infarct, what'd you find? So overall, we had a number of primary endpoints, um, mortality was reduced. There were three deaths in the placebo group, but none in the treatment group, which was gratifying. Um, the total MACE rate did not reach statistical significance between the two groups, but when we looked at the dose-response relationship between the number of CD34 cells uh, administered versus outcomes, then there was a significant reduction uh, of uh, SAEs, serious adverse events, with the higher doses, particularly over 14 million cells, and the subgroup with more than 20 million cells received actually had almost a 70% reduction in the SAEs, which was significant. The MACE rates also went parallel with that. And then we examined both perfusion changes and ejection fraction changes. Although perfusion changes were not significantly different, ejection fraction change also followed that same pattern such that patients who received higher numbers of cells had greater change in ejection fraction, with the improvement in ejection fraction reaching 10% remember from 34% to average of 44% in individuals who receive more than 20 million cells. Well, Arshad, uh, let me be real candid here. You know, this, you and I have talked about stem cells for a long time, and there's always been promise, 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 and not an awful lot of actual results. Now, this seems to have real promise. I think so. Uh, remember, this trial selected uh, your progenitor cells from the bone marrow. It wasn't a mountain marrow with just mononuclear cells unselected. So that's uh, an important first. The other is that this trial has used the largest number of CD34 cells ever administered in these kinds of trials. So even though you might confuse these trials in the way they have been conducted over the years, thinking that they are one more of the same thing, these are actually progressively important in terms of the milestones that they're achieving in terms of the cell types and the selected cell types given in terms of the dose that is being administered. So the uh, hope is and the expectation is that if we in the next trial were to use say more than 20 million cells, then we should see what we saw in that subgroup and have a major improvement. There you go. It sounds as though promise finally really is going to be a promise. Thank you, Arshed. Thank you very much.